Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. Today we're going to be working on Herringbone. It is one of the patterns in my book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. It features 12 easy to assemble quilting designs and we are working our way through the book, one quilt a month, to celebrate the release of the book and then give you kind of a visual guide. There are lots of uh, diagrams that are full color for you guys to follow along with in the book. These videos are meant to be supplemental to the book. So all the cutting instructions and step-by-step -step numbers and everything like that, that's in the book. But if you are a visual learner and you just need to see how it's done in order to make it work, then this is the place for you. So uh, the book you can get at your local quilt shop or from us at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you order it for me, I will sign it and personalize it for you because a nice little thank you there. We appreciate your support. Um, today's quilt is one of my favorites because it looks way more challenging than it actually is. We are going to do this entire quilt with strip piecing and we're gonna have very little fabric waste at the end. So it's really exciting and it looks really cool, but it goes together a lot faster than it looks and you can really whip this one up fast and have it just look really really fun so we're going to go over how to do that and then some uh, pinning tips that I have to make sure you get uh, the perfect points each time let's get started so the original fabrics I used in the quilt are no longer available. I wrote the book about two years ago, so fabric lines don't always stay around for that length of time. So I'm using Shell Rummel's latest collection, Rhythm. I really like Shell Rummel. I use two of her collections in the original book, and since I discovered her, I've made something out of every single one. I've actually already made another quilt out of this one too. We can link that video down below. But I really love the soft tones and they really work with today's modern decor and I just really love it. And the colors and rhythm are really close to the colors that were in the original quilt so you can really kind of create the same look and feel. We are going to have kits available for this while supplies last. I'm gonna make up a digital version of it so you guys can see what it looks like, but I'm just gonna make pillows out of this one because I already have a whole quilt, and so I'm just gonna make some coordinating pillows to go with it out of the new collection. So first things first, we have to cut our strip so that way it is at a 45 degree angle, and that will allow us to be able to sew this together on a staggered way and that will make it so we don't lose any fabric when we're doing this we can make the most of those strips. Here's how you do it. So we're going to be cutting these in two different directions. In this direction for this strip set I need it to be going from the top left to the bottom right. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to put the 45 degree line of my ruler even with the bottom edge of that so that way I have that curve or the angle is going to be going again in the same direction as the one up there. So I'm going to go ahead and once I'm happy with that placement just go ahead and give it a little trim and I've got it pretty much as close to the selvage as I can and now I'm going to be able to sew these together in a staggered way so that way we don't lose any fabric. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip these right sides together and I'm going to arrange it so that there is a little bit poking out past the edge here. And ideally, this little notch here, where the little V is formed, is going to be a quarter inch away from the edge of that. If you are having trouble eyeballing that, you can always make a mark on your fabric and use that to line it up and put a little pin in, and that way you know you're gonna be in the right spot. All right, so I'm actually gonna flip this over because I wanna sew it down this way. And I always like to have the shorter strip above but again the needle when you have your quarter inch mark should be coming in right where that little v is and then you'll know that you're a quarter inch and then when we fold this out it's going to be a nice straight line like this and that'll make way more sense when we get a little bit further into the tutorial but for right now make sure you cut off your corners and pay attention to the directions to make sure they're going in the right direction because one half one row is going to get cut in one direction and the other is going to be cut in the opposite direction. Again, we'll show you that in just a second and what they look like when they come together. But just pay attention to your instructions and the diagrams in the book and then you will not mess this up. So again, if you have this lined up right, that little V where those points come together should be right where your needle is when you start sewing. And then from then on out, it's just like sewing a regular strip piece unit where you're gonna line your edges up and just sew on down. Okay. 
When you get down to the end here, these are going to be offset. That accounts for the offsetting we did at the beginning as well. So don't worry if they're not at the same point. Now you all know I like to press my seams open. I feel like it gives me a really nice join and it's especially for this one, you really want those points to be exactly where they should be. And if, when you're doing strip piecing like this, I find you get nice straight strips as opposed to ones that sometimes end up with like a bend on one side because you're manipulating that fabric as you're going through. Um, one thing I know I, I get comments every once in a while, people ask if it weakens the seam and I've not seen that at all. And I've sewn a lot of these like this and I quilt them to death and I get right into those corners because you can, you don't have all that bulk from the seams. And it really, um, I've not had any issues with seams popping open or anything like that, but I do reduce my stitch length just a little bit to about 2.0 instead of the 2.5. And I have not had any issues with this at all. Um, the one thing I do though at the end is when I finish my quilt top, I will stitch an eighth of an inch stay stitch going around the entire quilt top. And that way when I put it on the long arm, those edges don't start to come open. Um, because, and I did that even before I started pressing my seams open, but that seems to help keep everything nice and secure until you can get it quilted. All right, so once you've pressed everything, you should have a nice straight seam. If you see a wiggle anywhere in there, it means that you pressed a pleat into it and you need to fix it or your strip is not going to be the right size. What I also like to do is press it from the front as well, just to get that real good and flat. Now I've already sewn together the majority of the strip here, so I'm just going to join this piece to the rest of it. But the one thing I wanna point out is not all of these are coming together where we have a nice straight line. And don't worry about that because we're gonna trim this up before we start doing anything and get that as a nice straight line. So if you're not perfectly on for all of these, no big deal, don't worry about it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip these right sides together. I'm gonna to go ahead and sew that, press it, and then we're going to work on trimming these to size. All right, so now we've got a strip set that is offset like this. So we've got a nice big 45 degree angle here and we're gonna square up these edges. Well, not technically square because it's gonna be a triangle, but we're gonna even them up so that way we can cut real neatly from then on out and have everything be the right size. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lay this as flat as I can and ideally you're gonna wanna use a six by 24 inch ruler, but I left that at the shop today. So I'm gonna use my large 12 and a half inch one. And what I'm doing is as I am putting my ruler down so that way the 45 degree line in this case is even with this bottom seam and in my other one i kind of lined it up in the middle somewhere and things might shift a little bit on you i'm kind of leaving about a half inch or so even or on the outside here so that i can square that up because i would rather have a little bit of waste at the top than have to recut this because i you know maybe gradually went in a little bit as I did this because that's really easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that a trim. Pull that out of the way. And now I'm gonna line it up to do the rest of this. And this time, this is a nice little moment for quality checking. I am lining it up so that the 45 degree this time is on a nice seam. And I've got it down a little bit so it can also be nice and square and even with this edge that I've already trimmed. And as long as it's looking okay, you're gonna be all right for the rest of this. So I'm liking the way that looks. And now we have a nice neat edge here so we can go ahead and cut these strips to make our long rows for the quilt. You're gonna to wanna to use your 12 and a half inch ruler again for this next part because the measurement is larger than your six by 24 inch ruler. So you're gonna to have to use that and line up the measurement with the edge here. I'm not gonna give you the measurement here on camera because that is really important for you to get the book to get. But what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna line up your edges here and then you're gonna go ahead and just cut your straight line from there. All right, so I've got my measurement lined up with the edge of my fabric, and it's important to note that it's gonna come down quite a bit further than you anticipate it will. 
right, so just go ahead and trim as you're going. Then you're just gonna pull it down toward you. And probably one more cut is all it's gonna take to get through the rest of that. All right, so I've got my first strip that will become my row and that's ready to go. So I'm gonna keep on cutting down the strip set and then I'm gonna show you uh, what the other side looks like because it, it does look different. So we've got one side here where the angle is going from the bottom left to the top right when this blue is in the top. And then when I lay down this other one, it's gonna go in the opposite direction. So you can see it's coming the other way. So when you're trimming to place your uh, strips for your strip set unit, and when you're cutting, you just wanna pay attention to that and then organize them accordingly because we're gonna put these together to join our rows. I promise that'll make more sense. But for right now, go ahead and cut your strips um, for your rows out of the strip set. And then we're gonna come back and we're going to assemble these into rows and then join our rows together. One thing to pay attention to is if you've done everything right, you are gonna have some fabric left over here at the end. And that's not a bad thing because if you're off when you're staggering, then you're gonna still have plenty of room and wiggle room there so you won't not have enough. The other thing you can do and what I did with mine is I just cut this down with whatever length I had from it and then I made some extra throw pillows from it. You can actually see those in the book. So check that out and you can always just add a little bit and turn it, I think I did a 14 inch pillow out of it. it turned out really cute. So great ways to do extra little bits with your scraps and then that way you can have some coordinating uh, bits to go on your couch with this. All right, so I've got everything trimmed up now, and now I'm gonna join these into a row. And I know for the first one, we kind of eyeballed everything. And this one, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually draw my lines so that way I know that I am hitting everything correctly. So that way I have a nice straight row when it's all put together. So here's what I mean. So when you're done, this is going to go together and be nice and straight like this. But right now, when we sew it together, it's gonna to be going in completely opposite directions and that's kind of a weird thing to get used to. And ideally, you should have the same amount poking out on the sides, but we're gonna show you how to make sure that's exactly where it should be. All right, so I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line up the quarter inch mark with the edge of that fabric. It's a little hard to see on this white, but it'll work. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm gonna go and take my friction gel pen and I'm going to just mark the edges of that right there. And now these marks are my guide of where the piece underneath should hit. So that way when I unfold it, it's gonna be perfect. All right, so now I can layer these right sides together and I know exactly where everything needs to hit because the edge of this mark needs to hit exactly where this blue mark is, this blue fabric is underneath it. Go ahead and pin that to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Right, so I've got my edges lined up and then that mark is just even with where the blue fabric is underneath. So now I can go ahead and sew my quarter inch seam and know that that is going to turn out exactly where it needs to be when we unfold it and we have a nice straight line. All right, All right so, so get, get that started, started remove, remove your pin. pin. You, you won't need that, that once you get going a little bit. bit. Sew so all, all the way down, down to the bottom, bottom here. That pin. Then, then I, like I like to put, put my finger, finger just to the right of that press foot to help keep everything nice and even and have a nice quarter inch seam as we go all the way down. Now when I open this up, this should be perfectly straight and it is. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Nice straight lines here. I'm gonna go ahead and press this open and then finish sewing my vertical halves of my rows together. Then I'm gonna show you how to join them. Thank you. 
So this is where this quilt gets really cool and where it looks a lot more complicated than it actually was. To date, all we've done is strip piece and cut some stuff apart. And now we're gonna pin it together and it's gonna look really neat and have this cool herringbone pattern. So you know that we've already sewn them together so that they're kind of meeting in the center like this. And now it's gonna be offset. So that way the bottom of one of the large pieces is going to be even with the bottom of one of the short pieces, which will create a nice little visual interest, add a little bit more than if it had just been straight like this. And it just adds a little bit something extra. So I'm gonna show you how I pin this in order to make sure everything comes together exactly where it should. So first I'm gonna flip this right sides together and I'm gonna make sure I'm lining it up. So I've got the bottom of my first skinny piece that I'm lining up with the bottom of my first long piece to create that offset. And then what I do is I just kind of look at this from above and because we pressed it open, it's really easy to see. You should have the one half of the seam going in one direction and the other half going in the other. You can kind of peel that back a little bit to make sure your seams are right on top of each other. And once you're happy with that placement, I just put a little pin in going along with that diagonal seam just like that. Now I'm gonna keep on doing that, pinning at every time one of these seams comes together. So we're gonna be able to skip these because we don't have any matching seams there, but we've got the bottom of the skinny and a bottom of a long here. So I'm gonna match those together again, get them in line, give it a pin, and I'm gonna keep on doing that all the way down my row. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this quarter inch seam and pulling those pins as I go. All right, so once I've got my needle down in the first half of that seam allowance and I know everything is gonna be held together, then I go ahead and pull my pin and I'll know that those seams are still gonna be exactly where I pinned them. So I'm gonna press these seams open too, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Instead of just going straight down like I did before, I'm lifting and pressing. And that is so I don't press any of these other seams going in an opposite direction. I wanted to stay nice and flat. So I'm just kind of moving my hands down and pressing the next bit open with that. And then slowly moving the iron along with that. Just like before, I like to give it a press from the right side as well, just to get that seam really nice and flat. And you can tell that these are just coming together very, very nicely. My points are joining right at the right spots here. I'm really happy with it and it looks great. I just love how this offset has turned out and these colors look great together. I love it almost as much as the original. And again, we do have kits for this while supplies last. So you're gonna keep joining your rows just like I showed you. So you'll get your centers together and then you'll join your outsides in the same way. And it really is very cool. It creates a really neat uh, way of doing things and, and a cool look. And it again, it looks so much more complicated than it really is. So when you're all done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim up this top part and you won't do this until your entire quilt top is together. You're just gonna trim your top and your bottom even. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just putting any inch line even with that center bit and then where the bottom of this V is hitting the outside there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and trim from there and take that piece off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. And for this one, I'm still lining up any inch line with that center seam, making sure that I still have several inches here to guide, so I have a nice straight edge, and then go ahead and trim the top here. And now we have a nice even top, and your top for your quilt will be nice and even as well. Now, what you're gonna wanna make sure you do, because this is all on the bias, every single edge here is now on the bias, and if it's gonna be a little bit before you quilt it, or if you plan on having it long-armed, what is a really, really good thing for you to do is to do that stay stitching. And all I do for that is I set my sewing machine up so the needle is moved as far to the right as possible. And usually that's about an eighth of an inch stitch. And then I just line my edge of my press fit up with the edge and I just stitch around. So I get a nice eighth of an inch stitch around it. What it does is it kind of acts like a stay stitch. If you've ever stitched like a neckline on a garment, it keeps it from getting stretched out, will help keep your quilt top nice and square and the edges nice and crisp and firm. 
And since it's an eighth of an inch stitch, it's gonna be covered over by your binding when you go to finish your top. I'm gonna to turn mine into a pillow because I already have a whole quilt of this, but I thought it would be fun to redo it in Shell's latest line. It's really pretty and I really like how this print here that I use for the center has some movement in it. And so it just kind of goes up and down, up and down. Um, it's really, really cute, really fun. I'm gonna show you guys how I quilted this too in another video. Um, but for right now, I just wanted to leave you with this to give you some ideas. And it just, I just love how it turned out. It's so super cute. All right, well, thanks so much for following along with this week's video. Um, as always, you can get everything you need for this project over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You can pick up a copy of the book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. It has this plus 11 more patterns and all the beginner quilting stuff you need to know. I also talk about my quilting decisions, including how I'm going to quilt this one. And we're gonna have a limited supply of kits using these fabrics that you see here because the originals are no longer available. Um, but I really like how this turned out. It's really cute um, and really just lovely. I can't wait to have this be a throw pillow um, to go along with that original quilt. They really are gonna work very nicely together. Thanks so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next week, happy quilting. So this is the point where the pattern gets really cool. So, you know, we've cut everything going in opposite directions. So that way when they come together, they're at this angle, which is really fun. And I think I just sewed all of them together in the wrong direction. Yes, I did. That's flipped. All of them like that? Yes.